Welcome to the Building Your Career podcast. I'm your host, Don Tarjanskis, and join us as we explore the world of construction. Each episode, we welcome a guest that shares career highlights and career advice, and hopefully inspires the next generation of construction professionals. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Building Your Career podcast. Um, Today, I'm joined by Zhao Zhang, um, who is going through the thick of it at the moment in terms of he's got a little bit of uh, construction experience before. Uh, He's now at Loughborough University um, and is doing some work with Lendlease as well. So it's going to be quite interesting to hear his take on where he's at the moment in university. So could you just kind of share with us um, your previous experience in construction, the degree that you're doing and that kind of relationship with Lendlease as well? Yes, uh, Dom, I'm going to start off with uh, my very early experience, um, which is when I was 13 years old and it was with BAM construction. That is my very first experience. Okay. And basically BAM was building my secondary school uh, back, in, uh, back in Yorkshire where, where I lived. So I was really interested in the work. Uh, while during break times and stuff, I was watching construction work. And one day, <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends played. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, the the senior construction manager, which is the most important person in my career, he uh, got me uh, got me on site. And basically, I was on the, I was on uh, the newspaper uh, in my former local area, sat in the mobile wow. uh, sat in the mobile cray on top of my head. I remember. And then that was in year eight. And then year 10, uh, school work experience, he organized me to a uh, to a local site, which is a 36.5 million pound venue project. So I was working with the engineers and the site managers on site, which has lasted a week. So, so since from then, I knew uh, construction is the industry I definitely want to go into. To be fair, it's something in, I interested me since I was a child. And yeah. then, um, up to after year 10 and I've done my GCSEs, done my A-levels, and then I applied to um, I applied to Loughborough University studying construction engineering management, which is a four year program with a placement year. And uh, obviously uh, it was during COVID, I, I, I took a gap year. So I didn't want to waste my gap year time, so, uh, which means that I have, uh, I've done a, uh, a year uh, worth of work experience with, um, with a local company called Ashcourt Group. I was working with the uh, civils and construction side of the business. So I was working as a trainee setting out engineer or site engineer. So I was uh, assisting the property engineers and the site managers doing the setting out, doing the QA on, the, uh, on a roadwork scheme near me. Which is um, mm-hmm. which I'm fortunate enough to uh, step in the project and get the project completed. And um, in August last year, I was, um, was very keen to look for sponsorships and placements. So I was, I was going through because Loughborough University for my degree, they are uh, they do sponsor students to come mm-hmm. uh, to uh, in big companies. So uh, I re- I went to research a few, but Lendlease really stood out for me. But I felt like from mm-hmm. my previous experience and my uh, career ambition, I definitely want to do something big, uh, doing some big projects. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Lendlease got some extremely brilliant landmark buildings, such as um, the Sydney, Sydney Opera House, and oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, just testing. My apologies. <laughs> Don't worry. And uh, yeah, projects like that. So I uh, sent my CV and cover letter to them uh, during because uh, for uh, for my sponsorship application. And uh, for for March this year, I went to uh, I went to London for my for my interview in Google Kings Cross. So not Kings Cross. I mean yeah. Google headquarters project. Uh, yeah, I was, since from there, and I got my I got my sponsorship on the graduate graduate sponsorship program, and then yeah, I got my role as a sponsor student slash uh, assistant construction manager. <laughs> wow, what an awesome journey! What an awesome journey so far. I mean, massive shout out to the senior construction manager at BAM. That yeah, that was great to to really kind of take you on board and see that you had a little bit of an interest and really run with that really. So yeah, that's incredible. There is good people out there who are willing to yeah to do things. Because like I remember that. the words he said was, uh, "If he doesn't inspire the next generation, uh, who's going to lead the construction industry?" That's exactly what he said. Exactly, exactly. Um. 
out of interest, what was it that kind of piqued your interest in Lendlease then? What, what, how did they stand out from the other companies that you were considering? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, basically, I felt like Lendlease uh, is, a, is a, obviously they are a global uh, company. They're based in Australia. Yeah. So and also uh, as a the type of project I am interested in is I really do like large buildings. For example, yeah. skyscrapers. Like for example, previous project Lendlease has built is like eight Bishopsgate in London. And also yeah. projects like uh, Google headquarters in London. So, and also mm-hmm. apart from that, uh, obviously their Lendlease culture really, uh, as a business, really interests me, and they really value mm-hmm. uh, young people and also uh, health and safety in the companies is a massive part as well. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and also uh, graduate training program and obviously my sponsorship program drives me into it. And also after mm-hmm. my after graduation, uh, there is a chance for me to go traveling. Uh, they got they got a project all over the world, which is which oh, is wow. absolutely brilliant. <laughs> that's cool. So could you just kind of break down how the sponsorship works then, just for some of the people who might not know that would even be an option? Yeah. So basically, um, so I, I think there might be a little bit of a mistake in there. They thought uh, sponsorship might be like sound like an apprenticeship program, but it's it is mm-hmm. actually worked different to apprenticeships. Because apprenticeships are, you do uh, one day at uni, you know, four days at work, but I am different. I do full time at uni. So I spend mm-hmm. my summer placement between my second and, sorry, first and second year uh, in the summer uh, to work about six to eight weeks on a project. And then for my industrial yeah. placement year, which is between my second and third year, I will be working uh, for a year long placement, uh, which, is, um, which is based on any of project they've got. And mm-hmm. uh, if I uh, w- if I, if I uh, gradu- su- successfully graduated with a two one or above with my degree, then I will mm-hmm. um, I will be joining the company with a grad- two years worth of graduate training program. So uh, during the sponsorship program, uh, I will get paid a bursary uh, during a university. So uh, which is like um, yeah, and also they will definitely help you for any uh, for example graduate dissertation, any coursework as well. So. Yeah, you can absolutely feel free to reach out any colleagues for some support. That's incredible. I mean, it's good to know that there's companies out there that take this really, really seriously yeah. and, and put a lot of time and effort into actually check training up the next generation. So in- incredible, incredible. So with you then at the beginning of things, what kind of first started your interest in the construction industry? Did it go further back then, the, the senior construction manager at Bound? Yes. Or where did it first start? Yes, it is uh, absolutely way before. Because uh, since, since I was a child, uh, I can re- remember on top of my head that a bit of an anecdote. So all of my, um, as a lad, all of my toys were building blocks and machinery. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved to play with sand uh, while I was a child uh, and shovels and stuff. And um, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm originally from China and, and my hometown is a really big developing city uh, in the in the northeast. So I remember we were building because uh, my hometown is like uh, it's like quite a hilly area. I remember just w- watching the huge amounts of earthworks. Like they're building, they're building high rise buildings on, on, on mountains, which is magnificent to watch. The amount of machinery and obviously there's some skyscrapers in my city. I always looked up to the skyscraper as a child. How how can they build that high? How can concrete still go up that high? Yeah, so my interest started uh, at a very young age for the construction industry. So mm-hmm. all the way until now, uh, nearly nearly t- twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back at some of the kind of the early days in the industry then um or indeed kind of what, what you've learned um at university is there any valuable lessons or experiences that you kind of learned at the early days which has been really good lessons and have, has, has helped you through uh, to get to where you are now uh yes there's uh so during the industry i felt like always ask questions anything you're unsure yeah. of then there's no not a silly silly question at all. So I remember uh, all of the engineers, uh, the project managers, contract managers I've worked with during my placement year, uh, sorry, my, during my gap year uh, in the uh, in the company. So they've uh, they've definitely supported me loads uh, in, for example, if any managerial questions um, I ask them, they definitely give me a really good answer. And also technical aspects mm-hmm. such as setting up a total station, surveying. 
yeah, my colleagues have supported me absolutely loads. And also they've given me uh, advice for future careers and some reading mm -hmm. material like books as well. And uh, for university side, uh, then it's definitely stuff like I'm really interested um, in the theory side uh, of, of my uh, of what we're learning, because I felt like it definitely yep. does apply to the future careers. And also um, and also three key practicals we have done uh, for first year right now. We've done a concrete cube test, which is uh, we're mixing the concrete, getting the cube and then waiting for 28 days to crush it which is really interesting. And also That's we did so a cool. week worth, worth of um, field work in setting out and surveying, which uh, yeah. only just got it back, got a first in that, which I'm really pleased with myself <laughs> and my group awesome. and my group, obviously. Awesome. Uh, and um, and also during uh, a few months ago, we, we traveled to uh, Somerset. We're doing construction live, which is building a road section. We uh, all of us, uh, CEM students, construction engineering management students, our cohort, when first year cohort, went build a section of a uh, SUDS sustainable urban drainage system, a road section, uh, in a week mm -hmm. time, which I feel like we definitely learned a very valuable lesson as a as a, as a, as a labor, as a construction worker. So all the all the trades and stuff, which I think for our future career, it's definitely important to understand what they are doing as well. Definitely. And I think, you know, there's a really common theme there going back to your first point is ask those questions. You know, you, you said yourself, people were more than willing to give you the answer. So I think it's a pretty common myth that you, you can't ask anyone any any advice or, you know, people aren't going to want to help you out or anything like that. Yeah. But you've proven that that's not really the case. Really. Yeah. Are you a job seeker, tired of endlessly scrolling through job boards with no success? Has your job search hit a dead end? Well, we're here to tell you there's another way. Here at Quest Personnel, we offer a variety of free resources to help job seekers just like you. Our team of expert recruiters is here to help you through every step of the job search process, from CV writing to interview techniques. But that's not all. We also offer exclusive access to workshops, networking events, and other job roles that you simply won't find anywhere else. So what are you waiting for? Get in touch now on our website, questpersonnel.co.uk. Um, out of interest, just following up on that point as well, is there any kind of myths that you had about the construction industry or any preconceived ideas that when you came into the industry that, that you found out just simply weren't true or, or might have put you off maybe? Uh, yeah, because uh, it's not uh, and it's not really putting me off or anything. I felt like it definitely worth a try since I was younger. So the myth was uh, for university and telling my family members while they're studying I remember my, my mm -hmm. grandma, which is all the way in China, she's asking me what degree I'm studying. I told her I'm studying construction engineering management. She is, uh, mm -hmm. she's telling me that, oh, are you going to be a, are you going to be a brick work, uh, sorry, brick liar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she, she yeah. said, she said to me that, oh, it's going to be a tough job. And then I told her that, um, I said, I will be more office based. I'm, I'm the management, I'm more towards the management side and I will be yeah. site based as well. And she said to me, oh, are you an architect? So uh, there is a bit of a, a bit of a um, <laughs> misunderstanding in the industry, and also um, yeah. So uh, I, f I felt like in the beginning I felt like, oh, is construction going to be uh, stood out in the sun all the time in the summer, and then going to be freezing cold in the winter, and it's going to be really muddy. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's in the uh, in the beginning. But muddy part, I think it's fine because I, I like it. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I felt like for. For any students uh, want to do any uh, anything related to civil engineering, construction management, or QSing, even architecture, so mm -hmm. um, anything to do with that, you're definitely uh, to be more. It's, it's a half a half a time between office and site, so it's not it's yeah. nothing like uh, you, you're outside all the time or you're stuck in the office all the time. You get a great balance, yeah. and also nowadays are the same in construction industry. Okay, great. And uh, obviously, with the construction industry being ever changing, and, and obviously taking on quite a lot on board at university at the moment, is there is how do you kind of keep on top of the latest changes in technology? Is there any kind of groups or any events that you go to or anything that you would recommend in terms of just staying in, in touch with the industry for someone just starting? Yeah, because uh, two things I, I am um, part of. So I am a CIOB student member right now. So and mm -hmm. also they come to our uni for any uh, for some events as well. 
For example, uh, okay. at uni right now, I am a student ambassador for my course slash a course rep. So they they do they yep. do uh, very actively come to speak to us any uh, about whether the course is industry standard, which is I think is really really good because uh, we we get to know we get to update of what's going on in the industry as well. Uh, mm-hmm. And also, uh, I'm I'm very active on LinkedIn, so uh, yep. I I use LinkedIn a lot uh, every day. I at least spend about an hour every day. Uh, just on it because mm-hmm. just to check uh, things going on in the industry and any yeah. uh, what's the future like for uh, interaction. That's great because I, I think a lot of people think that you know you've got to pay for all these documents and things like that. But as you demonstrated there, there's lots of free information out there that you can just get involved in straight away yeah. for people who are curious about getting involved in the industry. But the information's out there and it's really easy. Yeah, to, uh, get access. To go yeah. Find, really. Yeah, definitely. So with the industry being as it is, and and funny enough saying about the CIOB, but they published a report a couple of months back saying that we need a quarter of a million more people in the UK industry by 2027. So obviously there's a big shortage, but what can the industry do to kind of attract, nurture and and retain that young talent as well? Yeah. Um, What what, what can be done differently? I felt like, yeah, as as a shortage, uh, we're saying, I felt like um, the uh, construction companies uh, can always turn up to uh, school, uh, school careers fairs. So uh, I felt like um, it's it's not not necessarily university or sixth form. I felt like during even during primary school or secondary school Mm -hmm. would be absolutely fine. It's because um, Mm -hmm. there there will be uh, people might think you'll be a bricklayer, stuff like that. But it's really not. The the opportunities in the construction industry is actually endless, uh, in my my opinion. So um, I felt like, yeah, obviously speak to get more young uh, young students involved and also uh, I feel like careers fairs are, are quite limited with the opportunities such as uh, stuff like uh, maybe medicine engineering stuff like that but I feel like construction will definitely be dived in a bit more and more talked mm-hmm. about more bring up so uh, in the future uh, the there's more there's more and more professionals and uh, even trades uh, in the in the industry so uh, make mm-hmm. the industry grow bigger and much better people wise yeah definitely and i think we've had a few of directors on here who are very vocal in going out to the schools and just telling people and busting those myths and telling people it's not just a bricklayer or a roofer that's not your only two options yeah. you know there's lots of different variety um of different types of job roles different kind of things that you can do so it is all about just trying to spread the word and, and get the word out that, that there is out of interest just on that one as well which which different teams have you been involved in when you've been out there, uh, you know, kind of working on sites? Yeah. In the commercial or production or what? Who have you been involved in and what have you kind of learned oh, from well, those teams? I love to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, when I was uh, with um, BAM Construction uh, during, the, uh, during my uh, year 10 work experience, I was working uh, for the main contractor's site team which is the uh, okay, yeah. which is uh, a team lead, led by the project manager uh design manager a QS because it's under design build contract and then mm-hmm. excuse me and also for um also for the site team we've got site managers and obviously myself I was working with the engineer site engineer so uh, yeah I was working with the site team on that I feel like uh, the main contractor uh, side of work is something I'm really interested in it's because yeah. uh, if it's a design build contract, you will you will be involved in the design stage, uh, and all the way into the project completion. Which I feel like I can get get a bit of everything. Uh, uh, Knowledge wise, mm-hmm. it's going to be really broad. And uh, for my second part uh, of my uh, uh, for my for my gap year, which is uh, I was working, uh, we, we were as a we were a subcontractor. So the roadwork scheme, which is more of a civil side. And mm-hmm. so construction and civils, I've, I've worked in both. So civils is like, we're, we're a subcontractor side uh, with, with the main contractor, uh, with, they're called Colas. So uh, w- with them, uh, they, are, they, are, they are above us. They, they are managing all of our, our quality of work. So we do the main, um, we do all the main uh, setting out work. So, and then after being approved, our documents gonna get signed off. And also they, they, uh, their engineer or their managers would actually quality assure and check in our work. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, it so, sounds like you've gained exposure across a lot of different things. So very lucky to have worked on so much different and a variety of stuff at, at such a short period. And I think that goes back to a lot of advice that we give is just at the early stage, just branch out, you know, try and get as much experience in different fields as yeah. possible and speak to lots of different people. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. It's been it's been really eye opening, actually. Um, and it was great to hear your story as well. And I think, you know, you're someone that has got a lot of experience at the beginning. And I just wish you the best in, in your career so yeah. far in construction. Thank you very much, Dom. Brilliant. All right. Thanks very much for having you. Take thank care. You. Thank you for joining us on the Building Your Career podcast. We hope you enjoyed hearing from our guest and learning about the different career paths available. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so we can reach even more listeners. And if anyone wants any free CV advice or simply wants to know the options available to them, don't hesitate to get in touch.